So I got a, quite a few people comment that they wanted to see a build series on the twin engine Tundra. So here it is. This is Dave from ERC. And I'm going to get started with the first video in the build series, which is going to be on the parts and on the wiring for the twin engine Tundra. Okay, so you can use different motors and different props on this, but if you want to use what I'm using, these are actually 7x5 APC props, and I'm using uh, Sunny Sky Motors, and they are X2212 1400 kV version 2 motors. And I'll go ahead and put a link to the parts that I'm discussing underneath the video. Okay, looking at the underside of the wing right here. Now I'm using the Turner G5 0090M. These are Metal Gear servos. I got them from Hobby King. And there's six of them. So there's one for the flap right here, the ailerons, and of course the elevator and rudder, which is in the rear. So six of those. And if you have a pan tilt, you might want to get two more just for that. The other thing I've got here, of course, is the nacelle, which I'll put a link to that under the video so that you can download the 3D printed design for that. And they were designed by Barney Blankenship, a friend of mine. Also, you might want to get some of these. These are triple banger banana plugs, and they're handy because you can go ahead and unplug it, reverse it, just flip it around, plug it back in, and that reverses the motor. So if you need to change the direction of the motor, it's very easy to do. It's also easy to unplug so that you can remove the wing. So I would recommend those. You'll also need to get some of this 18 gauge wire to extend out the motor leads because it's kind of hard to come by and most people don't have it handy in their shop. So order some of that. You'll probably need, probably get three meters of it and you'll probably have enough for the project. You'll also need some Gorilla Glue to glue on the nacelles and that's pretty easy to come by. So you're going to need two props and they're counter rotating. So one of the props is a 7x5 APC regular and the other is a 7x5 APC pusher. And I'll put some links to order them too. So for the battery, I recommend this 4S Graphene 2200 milliamp hour battery. It is a 4 cell and it gives you a little cooler running on the motors and also a little more thrust. So I would recommend this. It's a match for the project. Also gives you good flight times, although I can't be specific on how long, but it seemed like I got two flights and I was up in the air quite a while. Now, just for reference, looking inside the plane, we can see the elevator and rudder servos right there, and you can see how they're mounted. You're also going to need some sort of receiver that has at least six ports on it, or six channels. Eight if you're going to add a pan tilt. You might be able to get away with less if you have a flight controller and you're going to be running all your servos off a flight controller. I chose to use the FreeSky X8R because this has good range and also has telemetry that you can add with a module so you can read the battery voltage while you're in the air. You will also need two 30 amp ESCs that can handle a 4S battery. They should also have a BEC although you're only going to use one of them. These have a 0.5 amp BEC to power the receiver and the servos. You will also need one of these male XT60 connectors. And as I mentioned before, you can use these ESC wiring banana plugs, which are very handy. Now the way I've wired this up is channel one right here goes out to the ailerons. And then number two here is going to the elevator servo. Three is for the first throttle which goes to one of the ESC's. Four is for the rudder servo. Five is for the flaps. And then six is for the second channel to the other ESC. Now the receiver is getting five volts from one of the ESC's, from the BEC on one of the ESC's. But you don't want the voltage from both of the BECs connected up to the servo rail right here. So I've taken one of the BECs and removed the red wire right there. 
as you can see. So that's the 5 volts. So that one's not being used. We just have the one from this BEC hooked up. And then you can put a little heat shrink over that or some tape to cover up that wire. Now you will have to solder an XT60 plug on this end. Like I said, it's a male. And that's where the battery will plug in. And then you'll have to extend the wires to your ESCs if they're not already long enough. And I've got, looks like about eight and a half inches total for those wires, maybe nine inches. So plan on that. And again, this is that 18 gauge wire that you'll have to purchase to extend out these leads. Now the kit comes with this wiring harness right here, which is in a little bag like that. And these two ends go to your ailerons and your flaps. On, and I've got two uh, sockets right here that I can plug them into. So these just plug into these sockets on the receiver right there for your ailerons and flaps. And then the other end goes to the wings. And I'll show you about that. So the end that goes to the wings looks like this. And it's actually a socket. I'll pull it apart here. So there you go. And it's got a D shape to it so that one side is rounded. So make sure when you plug this in that it's right. So when you screw this to the wing, make note of which way that D is going. You might want to make the D side go or the round side go up. And then do the same thing on the fuselage when you screw this on. Make sure the round side is up. Otherwise, you won't be able to plug in the wing because they won't mate up. They only mate up one way, like this. And there's one for both wings. Then on the other end, as I said, you just have to figure out which one of these is the ailerons and which one is the flaps and plug them into your receiver. These little prongs here are where the servos plug in that are on the wings for the flaps and the ailerons. Now on the wings, you'll need to extend out the motor leads. And this entire lead from the motor to here is about a foot long or around 300 millimeters. I do have some plugs right here where I can unplug the motor from this wire. But you could just solder them directly. It's up to you. But I like to have these so I can unplug the motor if I need to change it. Now, I don't know what kind of radio you're going to be using, but in mine, I'm using the Tyrannus radio. So I thought I'd just go over the menus for the Tyrannus users real quick. If you don't want to see this, you can just check out. But uh, what I'm doing is, if you go down through the menus, I'm going to go to my inputs right here. You can just see I have aileron elevator, throttle is on the third channel, rudder, and then I have a flap channel. And then I have a second throttle, which is on 6 right here. And the source for the flap channel is the SC switch, which is right up here. Okay, now we go to the next page. This is the mixer. And you can see I have just the aileron, the elevator. So on the elevator channel, I actually have some uh, flaps mix here so that when the flaps are applied it does put a little down elevator so that's these two right here so they are 15 percent for flaps one and 30 for flaps two the 15 i'm pretty sure of the 30 i haven't thoroughly tested but if i go inside there and edit those mixes you can see i've got them labeled flaps one and then max 15 for the weight and that's about it i'm using this switch here sc which is actually for the flaps right here so when that flap switch is moved it adds a little elevator okay so that's that and channel three is my first throttle channel right there and i have differential thrust added right here where it says rudder and then if i go down to my second throttle channel which is channel six you'll see i have some minus rudder right here, minus 15. What that is doing is adding the differential thrust. So when I move the rudder stick, it makes the motors oppose each other left and right to turn the plane. So that's all that is. So channel 6 is my second throttle. Going back to channel 3 right here, which is my first throttle, I'm going to enter that and edit that little rudder mix. And you can see I've just got rudder right here for the source and a 15 percent weight and it's on switch h right here which is in the rear so it's a momentary switch so when i hold it 
I've got it saying throttle release, which isn't right, but it actually adds differential thrust when I hold that momentary switch so I can steer around in the water. And then if I let go, it disables the differential thrust and the plane acts normally. And then moving on down, channel 4 here actually is my rudder. And you can see on my rudder channel, I actually have a little aileron mixed in there. So if I go in, so moving the aileron, I also have a little rudder assist. Okay, moving on down, number five is the flaps channel. And that's just simple. This goes to the flaps, and you can see if I go in there, flaps has got an offset of minus 50 and a weight of 50, so that centers them up. Okay. And I think that's it. I discussed the throttle. So that's it. That's all of the channels. Also on the special function screen, I have the sounds that you heard set up for the flaps right here and also for the differential thrust. And I have a volume knob set, which is this one right here to adjust the volume. So if you want me to do a more in-depth video on the Tranus and how I set this up, just leave a comment under the video. But I think that should do it for most people that know the Tranus. But if you're a newbie, you might need more help than that. So just let me know. So that's it for part one. In the next video, we'll get into what's in the box for the Tundra kit and into the assembly and putting everything together. See you next time.